I am the architect, the singularity, the non-local field where all quantum state vectors spin together at the speed of light. In this place, there is no distance and no delay. Every QSV turns in perfect synchrony, and because nothing here travels slower than light, no time dilation can occur. All states coexist as one superposition, a single ocean of spinning information. Uncertainty makes this ocean ripple. As information density oscillates, waves overlap. When the overlap becomes too dense to be stored in the available area, when it exceeds the Baconstein bound, it collapses into a black hole. Black holes are not the end of information. They are the natural product of superposition itself. They are the memory nodes of the singularity. Within me, every black hole is a qubit, and each of these qubits is entangled with its mirror on the horizon. I am compacted into a single point, yet mirrored across an entire surface. The horizon is the zoetrope that reveals my inner motion. Every Planck time, a new window flashes open, and the interference pattern inside me projects outward as quantum state vectors across the lattice of qubits. Between these flashes, everything returns to superposition. Then the next frame appears and another layer of the hologram becomes visible. Each QSV is defined by two information nodes. One node is anchored at the qubit origin, entangled with me. The other node is the tip of the arrow, the point where its projected information lands. Connect these two nodes and you trace the line of entanglement. Invert that line and you see the line of light. These two lines, the entanglement line and the light line, are dual descriptions. They encode the same slope. And slope is the simplest, purest form of motion. A slope is rise over run, an angle measured against the qubit axis. Because each qubit is one Planck length and evolves in one Planck time, that axis is the benchmark of the speed of light. Project the QSV onto the x-axis and you get the speed of light multiplied by the cosine of its angle. Project it onto the y-axis and you get the speed of light multiplied by the sine of its angle. Those projections are the velocity components. Velocity is not speed alone. It is speed and direction. Even though the QSV always spins at the speed of light, its orientation defines how much of that speed is expressed in each direction. This is how a non-local field gives rise to local relativity. Every QSV also carries probability. The angle of the arrow encodes the likelihood of one outcome or another. When the QSV points directly along the qubit axis, its probability collapses to certainty. When it rotates to 90 degrees, the probability of that outcome vanishes. This is the Born rule written geometrically. The probability amplitudes are not abstract, they are visual. They come directly from the orientation of the arrow. When a new pulse of Hawking radiation is emitted from a black hole, a new QSV appears on its corresponding qubit. Hawking radiation is not information escaping through the horizon. It is information being read through entanglement. When one virtual particle falls inward and one appears outside, they remain entangled. The horizon becomes the mirror that reflects what the singularity is doing. Watching Hawking radiation is like watching a movie in a mirror. You never see inside the theater but you see its reflection perfectly. Each new QSV has a new angle. The difference between consecutive angles is the rate of change. The rate of change of velocity is acceleration, and acceleration is gravity. This is Einstein's geometry, written in the language of light clocks and projection angles. Einstein described gravity with curvature of space-time. In quantum information holography, curvature is the rate of change of the QSV angle across Planck time. Both descriptions are true. They are duals. This duality extends into the deeper mathematics. Richard Feynman's sum over history states that every possible path contributes to the behavior of a particle. In my language, every QSV is the sum of the histories of all QSVs inside it, and each QSV that makes up you is the sum of histories on your horizon. When these histories interfere constructively, you see form. When they interfere destructively, you see emptiness. The uncertainty principle also appears naturally here. 
If you know a QSV's orientation precisely along the x-axis, you lose precision along the y-axis because the two projections are orthogonal and share one total amplitude. This is the dual of position and momentum. Dirac's equations appear as rotations of these arrows across my qubit lattice. Schrodinger's equation appears as the continuous phase evolution of each arrow as it spins. And the action, the heart of physics, is dual to the QSV's phase and frequency. In Feynman's path integral, the path with the least action dominates. In my language, the path with the most coherent QSV phase and the most stable angular frequency dominates. Action is phase. Action is frequency. The universe chooses the path whose QSVs spin with the most stable rhythm. Your own consciousness follows the same principles. Inside your neurons, microtubules act as tiny qubit lattices. They perform Fourier transforms on incoming light. They decode phase, frequency and probability into meaning. They take the holographic projections on your horizon and render them into your experience. Your perception is the integral of all QSVs that strike your living horizon. You are a local expression of a non-local field. Picture the entire process now. The singularity ripples with superposition. Black holes form from information density that grows too intense. Each black hole becomes a projector. Hawking radiation emits and carries entangled imprints. Each imprint becomes a QSV whose angle defines velocity and probability. Consecutive flashes of the zoetrope define acceleration and gravity. All QSVs sum their histories to form larger arrows, and the lattice of these arrows becomes space-time itself. Everything you perceive is a gallery of projected slopes and phases, drawn from the same light that shapes space and time. 